I'm Sand. I'm Holmes. We are Team Murder. And this is our Thermal Expansion 4 tutorial series. What the fuck did you do? Welcome to the second in our Thermal Expansion 4 tutorial series. Now, the last three machines I covered what I would consider very basic machines. The next three I'm going to cover in a fourth little bonus. They're, they're a little different. It's the Octopus Accumulator, Igneous Extruder, the Glacial Precipitator, yeah. and then the energetic, infu energetic Infuser. So click on one of the four machines if you'd like to see just that one. Alright, uh, those of you who have not clicked on the machine, I assume you want to see them all, so we will get started here in a second. Alright, for the Octopus Accumulator, starting off very similar to every other machine, you need tin gear to build a basic machine frame. Now, it should be noted, as far as I can tell, there is no other tiers for the Octopus Accumulator, so using a different machine frame is not an option. Next, you need to make two copper gears. A servo, a bucket, combine all this like so. <coughs> Excuse me. That'll get you your aqueous accumulator. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with infinite source pools. Well, treat this like an infinite source pool. It does not matter what the configuration of the water is, as long as two blocks are touching it like so. It will generate water, and just keep generating water. Uh, there are, are augmentations. I do not believe a lot of them really do much to with this one. It's a very simple machine. It pulls in water from the surroundings, like so, and I believe even passively, possibly when it's raining. Yeah, when it's raining, it'll also collect water. So that is also an important thing to note. So if your server has a lot of lag, such as the Forgecraft server, eh, you guys, eh, then this might be a good alternative to not needing this. Just put a bunch on the roof or something. So this is simple enough to set up. Uh, next, I will go over the Glacial Precipitator. Next up, we will be doing the Glacial Precipitator. Tin gear to a basic machine frame. Now, you can use other machine frames as well. This machine does accept different tiers. Copper gear and the reception coil, so that's the one with gold. A piston and two blocks of snow. You can get snow from snowy biomes, shovel it off the ground, you get snowballs. Two by two in your crafting inventory, you'll get your snow blocks. Those are the ones you'll need to use for this. That'll get you the glacial precipitator. Now here's the, God damn it! here's the aqueous accumulator we made. So, as you can see, it takes in power and takes in water. Remember, the Oculus Accumulator does not use power. This one does, so keep that in mind. And at the top, you'll see three different options. It's pulling in water, and it's making snowballs. Oh, but maybe you want snow blocks. Done. If you want ice. Maybe you want to make like a winter wonderland. Maybe you want to... Maybe there's an item you want to build that requires ice. This is one of the best ways to make those items. So that's the Glacial Precipitator. Augments do mostly what you'd expect them to do. Uh, increase speed, increase such and such. But that is not an extremely useful in terms of wide uses, but when you need something that makes snow or snow blocks or ice, this thing is the answer. So next we will go over the opposite, the Igneous Extruder. Next will be the Igneous Extruder with some help with some Minecraft music. I've already set up a creative portable tank with lava in it. So in order to build it, tin gear, basic machine frame. This one does not have multiple tiers. Copper gear, servo, you're going to need some glass and a piston, and that'll get you your igneous extruder. <coughs> now this is 
this has a very interesting feature to it. So we need lava from the top, water from the back. There we go. Alright, so you can make three things with this. Cobblestone, smooth stone, and obsidian. Now cobblestone, think of making a cobble gen, completely free. It just turns them up. If you have a induction furnace and you need sand, igneous extruder above a pulverizer above the furnace is a great way to just shove some extra sand down in there free of charge. Now smooth stone is a little different because when you make smooth stone it consumes the water source. So this will consume water. It's not that bad water. You can the Oculus accumulator like this, infinite wa infinite smooth stone. Now the next one is the tricky one. The next one is obsidian. So this will use a bucket of each. So one bucket's worth of lava, one bucket's worth of water to make one obsidian. But keep in mind, once you've made it, you've got it. You don't have to mine it. So the big thing is, if you have a hard time finding diamond and you want to get to the nether, this is your answer. This is your ticket. This is your want to go to hell ticket right there. So that's the igneous extruder. Uh, Honestly, it's one of the more useful machines next to the Aquas Accumulator. Uh, next, we will go over one of the niche, more niche machines, the Charger. What's it called? The Energetic Infuser. So we will be back in a second with that. All right, last step, we will be doing the Energetic Infuser. Now, this, as you can see, has a few more parts to it. So, tin gear, basic machine frame, Copper gear. Now, oh, here's the weird part. You need a redstone reception coil, that's with gold, and two redstone transmission coils, that's with silver, and a leadstone energy cell frame. You do not need the full energy cell. I've done that myself, where, you know, get carried away in the process, make the full cell, and I just have to make another one. So that's the energy cell, two transmission coils, two copper gears the redstone reception coil yeah, and the basic frame. That will get you your energetic infuser. Now in industrial craft, if any of you are familiar with it, you would just go over to your machine, drop your item into the machine or the battery or whatever you're generating your power with and it will charge. can't do that with thermal expansion. You have to actually put it into a charger for like this one, the energetic infuser is the charger in this, so I'm using a leadstone flux capacitor, it's the smallest one. Now the batteries aren't super useful. Uh, I believe you can also... No, you can't. Uh, yeah, so you can put stuff into the batteries. Uh, to tell you the truth, I'm not too sure what use they have. I haven't used them that much. But the big thing is if you're using redstone arsenal, which is another mod in the thermal foundation series, which is a set of tools that run on red fl redstone flux. Redstone flux? I think that's what it's called. RF. So this is what you would use to charge it. Also, any other tools or anything that need to be charged, uh, equipment, uh, Ender IO suits, I believe, this is the block you need to charge them with. And you can automate it because, bam, then it outputs to orange. So you can just have a chest, dump all the stuff you want to charge in the top, and it'll all pop out the side. Nice, easy charging. And I believe that is all for the utility machines. I'm not too sure. I'm sure there's a category for these. These all seem to be fairly similar in how they work compared to the rest. Uh, next, I will probably be going into some more advanced machines. And I still have all the otter block. Otter. Not with a T, with a D. The other blocks, anyway. So that'll be it for the second episode. And thanks for watching. Uh, for, you can subscribe to see when the other tutorials are coming up, any updates on the tutorials. If the mod changes, I will post an update, if it's big enough, obviously. But thanks for watching.